this is a group of, of questions that is sort of around the category of, come on, man, why don't Democrats just don't not, why don't Democrats just fix it all? You have super majorities. Um, so before I get to those themes, which are on all three cards, a few littler questions that are kind of ancillary on these cards. One is, why use the term pension reform? It is a funding problem, not nearly as much of a reform, call it pension cuts. Um, I think that's a fair point. I mean, it's part of it's semantic. People think the word reform sounds nice, so people who want to enact a change call it a reform. People who want not to enact a change call it something different. Um, the reality is that our pension systems have nowhere near enough money in them compared to what they should have based upon the promises that have been made. And that was a problem five years ago, and it's a problem today. I think it's frankly a fair accusation that some of the changes that have been advocated are more just cutting benefits than structurally reforming things to make sure that we're on a sustainable path going forward. Um, the Supreme Court's spoken loudly. That doesn't change the fact that the debt is there. We're going to have to make policies that allow us to find adequate funding for these pension systems consistent with the uh, court ruling. And it's, it's going to continue to be a financial challenge for the state to, to be direct. Um, next, is Illinois still incurring interest charges on unpaid bills? Yes, it's insane. It's you know, given the litany that Robin recited of things that aren't being paid for, the fact that we're accruing hundreds of millions of dollars of interest payments, it's just, I mean, what? Um, and now the main theme of these three uh, cards, which I'll just read quickly, the programs that Representative Gable listed provide important services, so why has the Democratic Party allowed this to happen? You guys have super majorities in both the House and Senate, you can override a vote, but you can override a veto. Why did the Democratic legislature allow the income tax to be reduced with no plan in place to cover the financial uh, demands? Why did Democrats not pass funding for the current budget that they passed? Has the legislature passed a funding bill? Why not? So let me start with two facts. The first fact, which is a fact, but doesn't always feel like a fact, is that everybody everybody who has looked with any seriousness at the state's fiscal challenges acknowledges that more revenue is needed. Everybody. Democrats, Republicans, nonpartisan entities on the center left and center right, and Governor Rauner. The way you can tell that Governor Rauner has concluded this is that he has now been governor for two years during which he's introduced not two but actually three budgets, not one of which was balanced because he can't figure out a way to balance the budget without more revenue. Nobody can. So that if everyone is prepared to implicitly or explicitly acknowledge that, why don't we just act on it? Well, at this point, there are no Republicans, including the governor, who are prepared to do anything to increase the state's revenue. The governor will be ready, he says, when all these other demands are met, but for now, he's not. It is true that as a matter of arithmetic, the Democrats theoretically have enough votes to override a veto. We have 39 Democratic senators. You need 36 to override a veto. We have 71 Democratic representatives. You need exactly 71 to override a veto. In practice, uh, the, if I may say so, particularly in the House, the votes aren't there to override almost any vetoes, certainly not on the most politically sensitive issues uh, like around revenue. Even if we as Democrats had enough votes to just override vetoes and pass whatever tax programs we wanted and whatever spending plan we wanted, that would probably be better than what's happening now. But it wouldn't be good. And it wouldn't be good for a very practical reason, which is the governor is the governor and runs the government. And we can't obligate him to spend a dime. We can simply give him the authorization to spend, should he want to, in accordance with his vision for how to run the government. He's the chief executive. It's a very powerful office. And so even if we could somehow enact balanced budgets by overriding vetoes, we will not have a well-functioning state government that way. We'll get a well-functioning state government by reaching an agreement and having the governor sign a budget that he then wants to manage. Uh, anything short of that will be enormously problematic. 